Awesome, so good to be with you. Um, Happy January, happy first day back in church for those of you who are back from holidays or joining us online after some time away. Good to see you. Um, How's your year started? It's been interesting so far, hasn't it? Um, I thought just before we get into the message today, I'd just give you a little brief update on uh, what's happening with Matt. I shared with you last week, um, some of you would have seen on social media, he um, started his year trying out a new, uh, maybe not a hobby, but a new skill of water skiing, which didn't go so well. Um, So he um, is having surgery this week. So that's actually a, a good outcome because it will mean that over the long term it will heal a lot better. But he's due to have surgery on Tuesday to re attach his hamstrings to his pelvis. So you can be praying for him on Tuesday and be praying for us. It's going to be um, a, a, a few weeks of recovery yet to come, but we're really believing that God's got all of that in hand. And um, yeah, it's been an interesting start to the year for, for our family, but we've already seen the faithfulness of God in providing an amazing uh, surgeon for him. And, and, and we're looking forward to seeing what else um, God might have for us to learn in this season. I was sharing last week that um, the word that God gave Matt for the year was patience. And so I, I don't think he was quite expecting to learn that this way, but hey, God has, is mysterious in his ways in how he likes to meet us and teach us, isn't he? So we, we're starting the year in a series called Our Father, and we're actually walking through the Lord's Prayer. I don't know whether you've ever done this slowly before. Um, I grew up at, at a, in an Anglican school where we recited the Lord's Prayer twice a week, every week for my entire schooling career. And so it sort of is like this rote prayer in my mind. But sometimes when things become a bit familiar like that, it's good to stop and actually walk slowly through and rediscover some of the wonder of this prayer that God has given us that that Jesus taught us. Um, It was actually the way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And what I love about Jesus is all through scripture, um, he is constantly shaping environments and creating environments for his disciples to learn and to grow in. And this prayer that he crafted is another way that he did that. And so for us, as we begin a new year, and perhaps as you start to be back from holidays, starting to plan out your year and thinking about, you know, what will 2022 hold for you and for your family? Starting in the Lord's Prayer is a great place to start, a great place to anchor ourselves at the beginning of the year. And so you might know it. I'm I'm going to, um, to, to I'm not going to read it to you because um, I'm just going to say it to you. Uh, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Now, some of you might be actually hearing that prayer for the first time, and if you are, I'm really pleased to be able to share that with you today. Um, This is the prayer that Jesus crafted. It's the prayer that he wrote himself, that he crafted and taught his disciples um, when they were curious about how they should pray, how they should engage with God. And last week, um, Matt took us through the opening statements of that prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he extended two invitations to us, an invitation to a posture of wonder and an invitation to a posture of surrender as we think about our God who is unmatchable, unmatchable in his awesomeness, unmatchable in his goodness, unmatchable in his grace, that when we start our prayer, we come acknowledging the goodness and the greatness of God, the God that we serve. And then your kingdom come, your will be done. And we talked about how challenging it is to surrender our own will and our own plans and our own desires. You know, when life's going really well, it's easy to trust God, isn't it? When everything's going great, it's like, yes, God, you're awesome. I trust you. This is amazing. But when we hit some challenges, sometimes praying that prayer, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it can be a hard prayer to pray, when, especially when maybe what's happening in your life feels hard or feels unfair or maybe just doesn't make sense to you. 
for us to find that place of surrender to lay down ego and to lay down our own plans and our need for control can be really challenging. But then we get to the next part of the prayer, which is where we're going to camp just for a few minutes today. One verse, six words, one sentence. Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. Seems pretty simple, just one short. I don't, it's not the shortest verse in the Bible, but it's probably one of the shortest verses. Perhaps one that we skip over in our familiarity a lot. Give us today our daily bread. I don't know about you, but the initial read on that for me is whenever I hear that, I think, yep, God will provide for all of my needs. And then I move on. And I think sometimes for us, particularly if you've been around church for a long time, you've been journeying on this journey of faith for a long time. Sometimes the words, we know them in our head, but we lose that connection at a real heart level or in the way that we actually take hold of that in our life, in our experience of faith. Um, but what I love about this prayer, and we're going to explore this, this, this one verse today, and we're going to spend some time there. But I don't know if you noticed this, but this prayer that Jesus has given us to pray The language is all communal. Our Father, give us our daily bread. It's our, us, we, not me, my, I. So isn't it amazing then that when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he actually taught them to pray together. So this is a family prayer. This is a prayer for your family to pray around your dinner table. It's a prayer for us as the family of God to pray. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that the journey of faith was never created to be done solo on our own. The journey of faith is one that we're invited to share together. It's a communal journey. It's a family journey. And so this is a family prayer. And so when we pray, give us today our daily bread. Yes, there's something that the Lord has for you, but there's something that the Lord has for us to share and for your family and for the people in your world that you do life, that you do the journey with to actually share and grab hold of today. So here's the first question that I want us to wrestle with. Give us today our daily bread. My prayer is that we would have a fresh revelation of what this really means today. Um, Because the question for us to wrestle with is how often do we actually pray this prayer with the alignment of heart that, God, that Jesus talked about, your will, be, your will be done, with the alignment of heart. How often do we pray this prayer with the alignment of heart, with the openness and the faith to actually receive whatever God has for us in that moment? Because I'm not sure about you, but most often my version of give us today our daily bread is give us today our daily bread as long as it's bread I'm going to like or as long as it's the bread that I want. I wonder if we could just hold that, just hold that thought for a minute, maybe just have a think about that in your own world. How hard is it to pray, give us today our daily bread, if we're not quite sure that it will be the bread that would be my first preference? Who likes bread? Where are the bread people? Who likes bread too much? Who likes bread but bread doesn't really like you? Where are the sourdough people? Do you know, bread has made a comeback, people. It's always been a staple in every household, but it has made a comeback in lockdown. It was the number one hobby that people took up right across the world, was baking sourdough. Anyone, who, who, who learnt to bake bread in lockdown? Anyone? How many of you? Yeah, look, there's a few of you right here, so you know. So the, who are the sourdough people? You only eat sourdough. Where are my white bread friends? <laughs> Good old white bread friends. Where are the gluten-free people who are just glad that there's maybe some bread that you can eat? We love bread, but it's such a staple in our household, isn't it? And you know, it's curious, it's curious for us to consider why Jesus uses the word bread in this prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Why doesn't he say give us today our daily money that we need or our daily resources or our daily answered prayer? You know, because bread's such a staple for us, we understand that idea, and it was a staple for the Jewish people as well. Bread was on every table. But bread in Scripture has so much symbolic significance, which we're going to get to in a minute. 
But before we get there, when Jesus would have said to his disciples, give us today our daily bread, their ears would have gone up. Daily bread. What do you think of? What else do you think of when you think of that big idea or that concept of daily bread? That's right. He is, was so intentional in why he used that phrase, give us today our daily bread, because he knew that they would instantly think about the journey of the people of Israel when they came out from under, under Pharaoh's rule into the wilderness for 40 years, and he fed them bread from heaven every day for 40 years until they got to the promised land in Canaan. And so he used something familiar to them. It was a throwback to a story, a generational story of God's faithfulness to his people. Um, let me just quickly find it for you. It's one of my favorite passages of scriptures. I love teaching on this scripture from Exodus 16. You'll remember this. Um, the Lord said to Moses, I've heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them um, at twilight you will eat meat and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Then evening came, quail covered the camp and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. And then they went on to gather it. The Lord said to them, the Lord said to them, gather it up, but don't take too little, but don't take too much. Just take exactly the amount that you need. And you might remember that in the scripture, some of them took too much, and by the morning it had it was infested with maggots. Gross, it was stinking and infested with maggots. Um, but then, you know, this was this, this was a story of God's faithfulness, faith, faithfulness to them. And the scripture goes on to say, um, God instructs them to take to take some of that bread and to put it in the jar and to preserve it. And it went into the Ark of the Covenant with the Ten Commandments as a symbol forever of God's faithfulness to his people. So as soon as Jesus would have said, give us this day our daily bread, their minds instantly would have gone to that story. Um, and so there's something important for us to grab here in this scripture about the daily the daily piece, daily bread. So not just bread on its own, but daily bread. This idea of daily provision. Be filled so you are satisfied. Don't go hungry, but also don't take more than you need. He told them not to store it. Um, God's promise to them was that he would give them fresh provisions every single day to sustain them. And that's what Jesus was referring to in this prayer. And that's what he's referring to as we enter into that prayer as well, that there are fresh provisions. Jesus is reminding them of God's faithfulness. He's also reminding them of God's presence with them every single day. God is not a God who just shows up in a crisis. He is present every single day. Every boring day of that wilderness journey, God is there every morning, every night, providing exactly what they need. So he is a God who is faithful through every generation. Jesus is reminding them that he is a God who is present, and he's also reminding them that his provision is eternal and it never runs out. And I wonder if that might be a word for us to remember today, not just enough to survive, but an abundance. When we think about other examples in Scripture where bread shows up, you know, I straight away think of Jesus and uh, feeding the 5,000, where he took two loaves and five fish, Two fish and five loaves. What did he take? Two and five. Anyway, there were, the scripture tells us that everybody was fed and there were leftovers. And I also think about uh, the widow of, of Zarif Zarephath who had her last bit of flour and her last bit of oil and she comes to Elijah and she says, this is all I've got. I'm going home to make one last loaf of bread and then my son and I are going to die but the word of the Lord comes to her through Elijah and, the, and the, that flower never runs out, never ever runs out. So this idea of a God whose provision is eternal, not just enough to survive, but a God who is abundant in his grace and his goodness towards us. So bread, it's so symbolic in scripture. What does it represent for us? Firstly, obviously, physical nourishment, it's actual food. 
It is fuel that God in Scripture uses to, to nourish, physically nourish people's bodies so that they continue to live and, and, and be part of this kingdom life that we've been invited into, be part of the mission of God. So it's physical nourishment. But it's also our spiritual food. It's, it, it's, a, it's a symbol of God's word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 8. So it's our spiritual food. Bread represents our physical nourishment, but it also represents our spiritual nourishment, the way that we we feast and we we feed on the word of God. But it's also a symbol of the family of God and unity in the church. In in 1 Corinthians, the apostle Paul talks about the, the bread and the cup and how when we take the bread and when we take the cup, we're participating in the family of God. We're participating together in the work of God. He says, we are many, but we share in one loaf. So it's a a symbol of family, of unity. It's a symbol of spiritual food and of physical food. And then, of course, bread, the picture of Jesus' body broken for us. It's a symbol for salvation, for freedom, for for, for, for freedom from our sin, freedom from bondage, this idea of bread being about something that releases us into new life, Christ's body broken for us. So Jesus used this word so intentionally to remind us that God is the eternal source and provider for all our needs, not just our financial needs, not just the food on the table needs, but your spiritual nourishment, your relational needs. I wonder how many of us sit in the room today with some fractured relationships or having challenges in that area Bread is a symbol of family, of unity. So it's not just our physical and our practical needs that God is interested in, but daily bread is a representation of whole of life spirituality. It's a whole of life reality for us to enter into. Jesus isn't just interested in your Sunday life. He's interested in all of the layers, all of the complexities, even all of the mess that we don't want anyone to see. Daily bread daily bread, his gift and his promise for us. So just two invitations for you today that I'd love to extend to you. Um, It's a short verse, but it's fully loaded. But less is more when it comes to a little scripture like this. So I just want to give you two invitations. And my encouragement to you would be just to sit with these this week, maybe chat about these around your dinner table uh, with the people that, that you do life with and just wrestle through these and just hold them and let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord illuminate something to you out of this one little verse, these six words. Give us today our daily bread. The first invitation is this. I wonder if there's an invitation to us at the start of 2022 to greater contentment in God. You know, this idea of daily bread that we might not be living off yesterday's bread, yesterday's stale bread, yesterday's maggot-infested bread, nor that we would be striving towards tomorrow's bread that's not ready to be baked yet. You know, just a few verses down past this prayer, we have those words, do not worry or be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. But what would it look like for us to be present and content with the daily bread, the daily provision that God has for us this year? So an invitation to contentment. You know, we have lots of questions about God's timing, don't we? Well, at least I do. I'm always wondering, God, what are you up to? I don't know how the start of your year is going, but mine's not turning out exactly how I thought it would, and it leaves me with questions about God's timing. Why this? Why now? Why is this happening? But I feel like this is one scripture where the timing is actually clear, daily. It's probably one of the only scriptures where the timing is clear. It's written there daily, daily, daily. Even that on its own is just like, because it causes me to wonder, and as I've been preparing this week, I've been thinking, how often am I missing what God has for me because I can't quite wrap my head and my heart around the daily expectation of his presence and his provision in my life. It's so big, but so simple, all at the one time, daily, daily. So an invitation to contentment um, in God's plans, in God's perfect plan, 
in his perfect provision for us every day. I wonder, is there an area in your life where you feel discontent this morning? Maybe where you feel unsettled or even a little bit anxious? Um, And I wonder how God might be inviting you to trust and receive daily bread in that area of your life, even if or perhaps especially if it doesn't make sense to you right now exactly what's happening around you. So an invitation to greater contentment, and the second invitation is this, an invitation to a deeper dependence on God. One of my college lecturers refers to God as um, the artisan baker. And I love that idea that God is the artisan baker of our lives, meticulously and lovingly working all things together for good. So what would it mean for us to grow in a deeper dependence on God this year, trusting that he is the artisan baker of your life, preparing just the right bread for you in just the right time? So where is God calling me uh, to a deeper dependence on him? And perhaps another question for us this morning, where in our lives do we need fresh provision? I wonder what comes to mind for you when you think about, is it physical provision that you need? Is it spiritual provision? Is it relational provision or mental, emotional nourishment? Where do you need fresh provision? And how might God be inviting you just to a deeper dependence? Could you bring those things to him and trust him to be faithful as he's been faithful through every generation to us? Awesome, why don't we stand together, band, you guys can come and join me. Just one final thought, Um, us. There's definitely something that the Lord wants you to grab hold of this morning, some fresh bread that he has for you to take hold of and to eat and that would nourish you and satisfy you in a way that nothing else can. But I wonder what God has for us together this year. It's been such a strange few years and this year's starting, you know, equally, equally as strange and it feels like 2022 is still largely unknown. But I wonder what the daily bread is that the Lord has for us to feast on together this year and if we could trust him that it's good and that it's perfect and that it's bread that's going to see his glory magnified in and through us as a community of faith in our area and in our region and in the city where we've been planted to be. Um, So that would be my prayer. God, would you give us a fresh fresh revelation of what daily bread really is and what your daily bread is for us to lay hold of together. So why don't we stand? Let me pray for you this morning. I'm not sure um, what you've walked in with this morning or the the burdens or the cares that are just, or just even the decisions, the things that are sitting in your heart at the start of the year, but... um, My prayer for you is that today that you would have that fresh revelation um, of God as your daily bread. Um, He he knows just what you need. Even when it doesn't make sense or even when it's not what you think you need, usually it's not what we think we need, but he knows exactly just what you need. And so let me pray for you. I just want to pray that God would um, reveal that to us today and just that he would... Um, give us an, an, an openness and an alignment to really, to really live into that this year and to grow in our contentment. It's a hard one to be content. I think we'll be learning that one all year, not just today, and to grow in that deeper dependence. So, Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you that he came and walked among us and that he walks with us even now as our friend. Um, We thank you for this prayer that came out of his heart that he invited us into to lay hold of together as a family. We trust you as our Father who is good and who is perfect and who is awesome in every way. And God, again, we just want to lay down our own will and our own plans um, and come into alignment with your heart today, God. And the prayer of our heart is, give us today our daily bread. Lord, we thank you that you know what we need to truly nourish us. 
in every area of our life, in every area of our faith. And so, God, we bring our needs and our prayers and our petitions before you this morning, God, and and we invite you into that place to nourish us, God. And I pray, God, would you grow an expectation in us to believe you at your word that you are our daily bread, our daily provision, our daily presence, our daily power that you would help us, God, not to rely on our own strength or to default to wanting to control all the outcomes, Lord, but that we would come in that posture of wonder and surrender that was open to us last week and that we would grow in contentment in you, God, that we would grow in dependence on you this year, Lord. And so we pray fresh revelation of you as our daily bread. We thank you that your promise to every generation of your people is fresh provision every day. And we choose to lay hold of that today. We thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. Would you pour out your Holy Spirit over these beautiful people today here in the room and joining us online. God, would you move in a way that only you can? Would you touch hearts? Would you bring restoration? Would you bring freedom? Would you bring just fresh, a fresh breath of, of your air into our lungs today, God, that we might bring you praise and that we might radiate your life and your light to the world around us this week. In Jesus' name, amen.